I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education and we're here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Kat Berry who is the Teacher of the Year for 2013 for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, thank you. Well, tell us about yourself, tell us where you teach and tell us what you teach. I teach third grade for the Academy for Advanced Learning at Mather Heights Elementary School and I previously taught at Cordova Gardens and Cordova Lane Elementary Schools in a specialized classroom that I created for our district for third through sixth grade at-risk students who were administratively removed from their classroom. And that came after working several years as a fourth grade teacher in a regular education classroom. So that must have been quite a transition for you. Quite a transition, yes. Um, many differences, but a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. What's it like dealing with the student population that you, that you work with? Uh, would you consider them high risk, at risk? Uh, the population that I have right now are actually high achieving or gate identified okay. students and um, the who can become at risk if you don't give them the proper challenges. So in this for our particular program they do have to apply and qualify to be a part of it and from there we go, um, we go in depth in our discussions in our teaching and we let them create and explore and excel. Mm -hmm. And what kind of what kind of environment do you have in your classroom when you're fostering learning with, with those type of kids who really do have the mm -hmm. skills? In our classroom, it's about infinite possibilities. Anything that they can uh, create and design and aspire. It's a wonderful place for them to explore their passions mm -hmm. and to tackle those challenges that they might have. Tell me about a typical day in your classroom. What's the environment like? How do you, how do you excite oh, the kids? It's energetic. Uh, from the moment they walk in, I greet them at the door. I'm just so excited to see them so that they feel that they're excited and welcome to be there. And we dive right into the academics, but they're always wondering, you know, what's Mrs. Berry going to do today? What kind of exploration are we going to have? Or what is she going to open us up to? What are we going to create and build? Um, I'll show up in costumes sometimes. <laughs> and we do something special called the time machine. Uh, we go back in time once a month and I'll, I'll dress up from that era and give some mini lessons and it even ends with listening to music and showing them a dance step or two. Mm -hmm. They really enjoy that. Anything to keep them engaged? Absolutely. Now, how long have you been a teacher? 14 years. 14. So in that span of time, what kind of changes or challenges have you seen uh, in education? When I first started out, they were actually recruiting teachers, um, wanting them to come to California, specifically in elementary school. And then two years later, uh, colleagues of mine were losing their positions, and it was, it was very difficult, and class size started to increase. But I have to say, with all the challenges that we faced, I am very proud of our, our districts and our county for stepping up to the plate and what I call uh, you know, making magic when there's really no magic around. Mm -hmm. so what's the biggest challenge you face? Right now, it's making sure that all the students' needs are met. Um, it's difficult in a full classroom with one teacher and when certain services or special services are not there, um, we have to even step up more to the plate for them and that can become quite a bit of challenge. Especially if the funding's not there for extra things that you would really like to have. Correct. You have to kind of make up the difference. We're doing you know, this much with this much and it's possible just as I ask my students to step up to challenges, I ask myself to do the same. So you work with students who appear to be highly motivated, mm -hmm. but still there are those who need that extra push. What are some of the things that you do to try to motivate kids who, who may be a little bit behind? Well, I try to first find out what their interests are. What are they passionate about? And I'm not willing to change the direction that I'm going. Um, I want the education to fit them and their needs. And even in this last year, um, with some of my high achieving students, they might have difficulties behaviorally or having um, friendships with one another. So I try to facilitate that by creating a very cohesive and positive community. We hold community meetings to see third graders have um, academic discussions and civic discussions with each other. It is amazing what they can do if you, if you give them the tools. What's, what's the result of the community meetings? Because really that's more of an adult concept. When you deal it with the kids though. They, um, I teach them how to, how it runs, you know, a, a, like a meeting, but the kids actually facilitate it. They learn how to start it off. We have a creed that we say, so we remind ourselves what type of person we'd like to be for the day. And they will offer up concerns. But not only do they have to offer concerns, they have to offer up some um, responses 
or how could you have handled that differently? And to hear them interact and, and say to one another, oh, wow, I didn't think of it that way, or I'm sorry that I did that. And we always end with compliments and apologies, and they can do it. And it gives them a buy-in because they feel like they're part of the process? Absolutely. This is their meeting. It's not their teacher telling them what they, what they have to do. They decide what they can do. So you, you sounds like you have a good relationship with the students. What about with the families? Um, what are some of the things you do to, uh, to try to really connect with the families and draw them into to the classroom? That is a very important part in the community as well. And what I like to do is to make sure that the parents feel that I'm doing this. Please come in, not, not go away. I really want them to be a part of the process and they do know their children best. I will do things such as journal writing where I actually have a journal that goes home and the parent can communicate if they're busy. If they can't come to me, I go to them. I do home visits. I also have an open invitation to my families. Give me your child's activity schedule and I will come to one of their events and sure enough, I'll show up at their basketball game or a performance or a martial arts you know, belt promotion. I, I will be for, there for them and you know, cheer them on just as their family would. Yeah, still there might be those few parents out there that really the connection's just much too difficult. There are, especially when I was doing the opportunity program, many of the students um, just have a bad taste in their mouth for education. And what I try to do is make them understand that their child is very important to me. So I don't call home if there's something wrong. I call home to say, wow, they had a great day. Or, wow, you have to work till 6 o'clock, no problem. Can I come by at 7 o'clock? And I've been fortunate because the most difficult parent, even if they come in with their arms crossed like this, mm -hmm. they usually leave a meeting with me shaking my hand and, and, and thanking me. Um, that's not always going to be the case. I know that I'm going to do whatever it takes for that student with or without their support. So uh, you've been teaching for 14 years yes. and, you, and you, you've really been in the business for a while. What inspired you to get in the business in the first place? Well, believe it or not, this is my second career. Hmm. Um, my undergraduate work was in criminal justice and I also have my master's in criminal justice and I interned with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and qualified as a special agent. But at the same time, I was also a professional performer. I was dancing and singing and, and choreographing and that paid for college. So I had an opportunity to go with both careers. Unfortunately, uh, my father became terminally ill and I decided to put things on hold because my siblings are significantly older and already were well established with their families and employment outside of the area. So while I stayed, all kinds of other opportunities came up and oh man, I just love to take a hold of those. And one of them was teaching it upon a friend's suggestion. Kat, you'd really be good in the classroom. And you know, me? Well, you've taught in some way, some capacity your whole life. Try this out. And I did, and um, I have to be honest, the, the first time in the classroom was horrendous. <laughs> it was, uh, I was their third teacher, you know, as a long-term substitute. The, um, they were just chaotic. But I wouldn't have traded that for a moment, and that's when I knew I wanted to be a teacher because in the end, to have someone come up to you and say, wow, you've, you've really inspired me, just that was it. I was hooked. So it really came out of left field for you, didn't it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And here I am 14 years later and, and just so proud to be a part of you know, the education system. So what would you say to those people who are either in a different career or considering teaching as their first career? What would you say to kind of inspire them to consider teaching? Well, teaching is, isn't for everyone. It's definitely an art. But I can say um, if it's important to you to give back to the community. And that's how I grew up. My parents were very philanthropic and involved in the, the community and um, to be a part of something greater than yourself, to get up every day and say, I want to be there, I want to do this, and the connections that you make, lifelong connections. If you're looking for that kind of, of satisfaction, don't, don't expect the, the big paycheck um, or you know, the, the big pub publicity, and really that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. it, it's about making that difference every day. And my colleagues, my families, my students, they inspire me. They're why I get up every morning and want to be in that classroom. It, it's just, it, it's a humbling experience. Well, we appreciate your time and thank you for being with us. We've, thank you very we've much. We've been speaking with Kat Berry, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2013 for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Congratulations and thanks again. Thank you.